name is Emma, I am one of the producers. And I am Matt, and I am co-producing this shindig. Woo! And we just have a couple announcements before we uh, show you our guidelines to the key. Um, one of them is that there is an insert in a lot of your programs, so if you want to uh, if you want to be up to date with what shows RC Players is doing, you can sign up for our email newsletter and get a, uh, a handy dandy email as to what shows are coming up, like Red Eye, which is coming on February 10th if you want to see the show. Um, auditions will be before that, we will keep you posted. So Red Eye is our 24 hour theater where we all are kind of locked in this keen and then we perform 24 hours later. Um, and then Blythe Spirit, our full length, will be on March 16th and 17th. It's a ghostly time. <laughs> we also want to take the time to remind you to please silence your, or turn off your cell phones now. Right. So with that, we are going to show you a little safety video. <laughs> We have a few basic guidelines to ensure a safe flight here in the Keen. No food or beverages are allowed in the Keen, except for a water bottle as long as it's sealed. Excuse me, ma'am, can you please put away your sandwich? <laughs> you are allowed one carry-on item and a jacket to keep underneath your seat. Please keep all the aisles clear. Please refrain from using flash photography, as it does scare our actors. Huh. <laughs> Please make sure to throw away all your trash. <laughs> for your awareness, we would like to point out the following content warnings for this show. Swear, kidnapping. General violence and murder. Surely you can be serious. I am serious. Don't come true. Thank you for following these procedures. At RC Players, we ensure the highest quality of safety and customer satisfaction. Now sit back and enjoy your in flight entertainment. Sir, sir, no flashing. <laughs> <laughs> Who would cook? 
clean, bring me hot tea when I'm ill. My dear Mark, it does so very much for me. A woman cannot hold a status like my own without the silent toiling of men like mine. Marty, you're a very lucky man. Oh, my Georgia does amaze. And while we discuss <laughs> the subject of marriage, it would be remiss if we did not at least touch upon the topic of your late children. I did love those children as if they were my own. I was hesitant, believe me, in joining hands with a man with <laughs> two of his own children. You read the headlines, I am certain. The press spared him nothing. Marty Washington, a slut! Single <laughs> father Marty finds safety in Georgia. Unmarried Marty, what was he wearing? Now, look at it from my point of view. There he was, now without a wife, stranded, alone, no one to take care of, no breadwinner of his household, no house even to clean. Wait, I married him pity. But the children, I did love as my own. May they rest in peace. May they do that. But you were not spared either. You had smallpox too and survived. Ah, uh, yes. My grave illnesses from my travels abroad. Every week, the Saturday night fever. And you know, it was a matter of. Oh, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time you crossed the Delaware? Oh, how could 
I forget. So, get this. It's freezing cold, and our badass Georgia crosses the Delaware River. Get you a woman who loves an adventure. It snowed. Here she is on the river, leading boatloads of brilliant and capable young women, some of the brightest in the country, all trying to make it like us. Make it long enough to make a difference. And Georgia leads them through the ice, through the snow, and lives to tell the tale. <laughs> well, lives to let me tell the tale. <laughs> so you do all this stuff, Georgia. You pop your chair. You let yourself be married. You survive smallpox on Saturday nights and all the others. You're a young revolutionary. Beautiful, brilliant, respected. Don't forget courageous and determined. Courageous and determined. Don't forget she had little formal experience. She really was a trailblazer. With little formal experience, yet empowering boatloads, literally, of women through the birth of our nation. And you become president. Being president. The highest form of civil servitude was the greatest honor of my life. I finally traded my hatchet for a gavel, and you can imagine what a difference that has made. <laughs> and I must say, while men are great to have around the household, it is comforting to know that no man will ever possess that, that great position of president, demanding such responsibility. <laughs> With a citizenry like ours, it is certain they will not let a man in for a long time. Hopefully hundreds of thousands. Which is a great relief for those of us who know how hard the task is. Yes, a man would be too moody. Underqualified. A man just does not possess the skills needed for that office. At least that's something we can agree on. I mean, what would we even call them? Mr. President? <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo! <laughs> I went to this crazy party last night. Elton John was there. I mean, Elton John's twin brother, John John. Not the Jimmy Johns guy. I don't like him. There was a whole incident on his yacht a few years ago. And long story short, I'm not invited back. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, what did you do last night? Oh, you know, just the usual. Taking care of your 18 cats and watching Jeopardy? No. Taking care of my four rats and watching Family Feud? Somehow, that's even more depressing. What are you talking about? The rats are great company. And I can even bring them to work in my bag and no one even knows they're here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that I don't have rats in my bag right now. <laughs> Trisha, Trish, you guys need to sit down. We've been live this entire time. What? I said they were live. We've been on air for two minutes. And you didn't bother to tell any of us? <laughs> I mean, there was the whole thing with the rats, and we know we were all here for it. You don't need to explain it again. Hello, this is Trish and Trisha in the morning, and today we are covering a uh, fucking cold in Venezuela. <clears throat> I think you mean a string of cat bats in San Jose. It says your first guest got stuck under a bounce house for three days. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are covering the story of a child who got trapped under a bounce house for over three days. Many parents have been claiming that bounce houses are a safety hazard for years. My mom wouldn't let me within five miles of a bounce house. She always said, now Trisha, that bounce house is going to fly away. Just take your head straight off your shoulders. That explains a lot, really. You know, I also wasn't allowed to go into corn mazes because I was allergic to mazes, you know. <laughs> or any type of park, actually. Or slip and slides because those were a slippery slope to water parks. <laughs> or sleepovers or ice skating rinks. You know, my mom's friend's sister's roommate got ran over by a Zamboni once. And then after that, she had to wear ice skates every day because the doctors couldn't get them off her feet. <laughs> she also was not have a cell phone until last year because, you know, that's how the aliens control your mind. Oh, or skiing, or pottery class, or tamales. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sure that many of our viewers remember the bounce house incident of 2012, where a man was inflating a bounce house and he ended up getting trapped under it for 30 minutes. By the time the paramedics finally found him, he was convinced that he'd been gone for 12 years and he'd seen the ghost of Al Roker. <laughs> oh, 2012, what a year. The year of millions of awkward 12-year-olds singing Gangnam Style at their sixth grade spring dance. Oh, and the long way end of the Twilight movie series. It was also the invention of hashtag YOLO, a phrase especially popular among high schoolers who actually thought that wearing snapbacks was cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was also the height of popularity for Justin Bieber and Lil B's cat Kiki, who dropped her hit rap single that year. All culminating in the prophesized end of the world, according to the Mayan calendars, on December 21st. On December 22nd, 2012, everyone was thinking, wow, it's a good thing the world didn't end. And now we're here, in 2018, thinking, damn, the world didn't end. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, after that bounce house incident in 2012, many parents began banning bounce houses from children's birthday parties. Sadly, this had not stopped children from taking every chance they have to do something their parents tell them not to do. Because kids can be a little shit sometimes. <laughs> so our next guest are the child and her mother, Linda. Never ending embrace. <laughs> you can live off that 
<laughs> In fact, I did for seven years, from 1995 to 2002. Missing the one of my kidneys now, but that's another story. <laughs> that's how I met Dingo Strada, sitting by the pasta salad. He looked just like Huda, you know, before he went to a better place. He died? What the be, ridiculous be, shit is this? No, <laughs> he's not dead. He left the Albuquerque and changed his name to Johan. Like those fancy Europeans who think they're so much better than us? They ain't. We got something called democracy over here. <laughs> so what happened to Dingo? Well, the kid always been curious. And I was real busy with the pasta salad. Like I always am at those type functions. <laughs> the kid just walked away and I didn't even notice. And unlike that bitch Stacy's opinion, I am not a bad parent. She's been spreading rumors about me all around town, but guess what, Stacy? We all live in a town whose only import is crackheads from Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you know how the little buggers can be. I, I don't actually. I don't have kids. I totally understand. I have rats. Um, we had until about five minutes ago. That's weird. <laughs> but okay. Trish or Trisha or whoever the fuck Beep. you are. <laughs> this kid is so small he can barely see her. So she wanders off and gets herself into this bounce house with a bunch of other kids. And apparently she gets herself stuck between the inflatable wall and the inflatable floor. But no one notices she gets herself stuck. So she's just left there, sandwiched between the wall and the floor. And every time the kids start to bounce again, Dingo is thinking lower and lower. <laughs> so the only part of it you can see is her light up sketches. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't notice she was gone for a while after she went missing? Well, the kid doesn't really say much, you know? How you feeling, Dingo? Good. <laughs> find her. Well, the neighbor starts deflating the bounce house, and what do you know? The kid just rolls right out. <laughs> and how is Tingo doing now? She's just fine. Still eats like a horse. I just have to put her food on the floor now. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Mom, is that a rat? <laughs> we are now going to have a message from our sponsor. <laughs> Have you taken neopolyoxidosin sometime in the last 16 years? And have you suffered from side effects that include, but are not limited to, sore throat, nausea, hallucinations that include, but are not limited to, situations where a raccoon is eating your face off, headache, heartache, heart attack, the fear of public transportation systems, jelly legs, jelly arms, jelly fish, swelling, dehydration, the belief that chemtrails are real or death? <laughs> Call me now at Hopper and Hopper Law. Are you dead? We don't discriminate. For a limited time, we now offer free long distance calling between heaven or hell. Call us now at 1 800 Law. <laughs> Getting bad 
reception in hell. I feel like the only person that calls you anymore is Satan. Tired of your soul for every Ouija message. Sick of constantly getting woken up every night by prepubescent teens who just want to get in touch with the other side. Well now, for a limited time, we're offering unlimited texting and calling to Earth for the low, low price <laughs> of eternal suffering. <laughs> Call us now at 166-NOT-SATAN. I repeat, I am NOT SATAN. <laughs> I'd say it won't hurt, but I 
little oversight as to how beans are collected, and with America's constant rising demand for a coveted cultural staple, prices for said beans are rising as well. With these economic powerhouses choking the developing countries, okay, globalization is practically forcing families to throw their children into the field oh, to make money instead of keeping them in schools so they can eventually improve their communities in the future, perpetuating Claire. an ever constant cycle of child labor and oppression. Claire, and what's gotten into you? What? I'm just trying to help you make smarter decisions with the incredible privilege you have as a member of the American middle class. Did you ever think about how your purchasing power could affect others halfway around the globe? Well, ignorance is bliss, am I right? <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but that's a pretty bleak way to avoid an issue. Well, the world's a pretty bleak place, so I might as well enjoy what I've got while I've got it. Whatever keeps you content, David. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know that New Year's resolution I was telling you about? New Year, New You, la la Don't be so pessimistic. It's working, I swear. I've been eating better, hitting the gym before work, you know, the whole nine yards. All right, uh, what'd you bring for lunch then, Mr. Biggest Loser? Oh, just a few things that I picked up from Whole Foods on the way home from work yesterday. <laughs> Some fruit, a granola bar, and the pièce de résistance, a fresh quinoa salad. Oh, mm. wow. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? You don't know about quinoa, it's this wonderful grain that's high in protein and fiber and... Oh, I know about quinoa. I just don't know what you know about quinoa. <laughs> Globalization at nine in the morning. <laughs> Do you understand? I mean, I understand. So no, you understand. No, I, <laughs> I just think you're being a bit too real right now. What? How are you not understanding my contesting to your passionate condemnation of human rights violations and global market chokeholds and deforestation this early? How are you not understanding? That that coffee maker is a mouthpiece for American colonialism. Even the maker itself was probably assembled due to the of 
forced labor in Southeast Asia to pay off familial debt. Claire, I want nothing more than for you to cut this saving the developing world by making David feel like a murderer shit out. For the love of God! <laughs> the hell didn't turn on the cop. <laughs> no, I did. The damn thing's busted. Busted? What do you mean, busted? Busted, you know, kaput. Long gone. It croaked. What do we look like? A fucking thesaurus? No, 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 this can't happen today. Not today, not any day. No, damn it, no! What's going on, Paul? Did you wake up on the wrong side of the bed this morning? No, I slid the wrong side of the uterus at this point. With all the bullshit that I go through, there was only one consistency. This fucking coffee. It was always here for me. But where is it now? God damn it! Hades slamming into my frontal lobe, <laughs> trying to, to summon up the courage to rise off my rickety, stiff mattress. My ungrateful leech of a wife yells at me before I can even reach the alarm. Turn that shit off, she yells, <laughs> as she goes back to bed, leaving me to face this, this cruel, torturous world alone. I open my fridge, seeing nothing but a few eggs and some slices of stale bread. I review the bills. Putting on the suffocating suit, mortgage bill, water bill, electricity bill, all of them flipping me the bird. I drive to the hellhole, drowning in my great cubicle, waiting every day until they muster up the courage to barge in the boss office down the fuck off. But now that the cop is gone, the only thing that kept you tied to your desk and to your pathetic life, who is here to maintain your status as an extra in God's? 4.53 billion year old epic. Okay, Claire, maybe we should lay off Paul for a few. Give him some air. Answer the question, Paul. Who controls you now? No. No one gives me to chat with this bullshit. That's fucking right, Paul. No one. You were once a lonely man. You were so terrible watching the bourgeois beat jerky to her off on your staff and sip your beloved cup meat from your favorite mug. That's where the bourgeoisie wanted you, feeling like you wanted to up yourself. Unless you drank their Kool-Aid, they had you on a fucking leash. Now, you're Karl Marx's wet dream. You're <laughs> 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 And you want to fight. That's what you want to do, right? 
Please start off! <laughs> 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 Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Ha, 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 ha.